Okay, this is the arrow. Take. What's up, you guys? I'm really excited to share with you what we call the gospel arrow here at Fielder Students as a way for you to encounter the gospel as you read every page of the Bible. Encounter the gospel in that passage and actually journal through it. And so the gospel arrow looks like this. You see, it's timeless truth, truth verse, gospel moment, repent, believe out of reaction to that gospel moment, and then prayer. And so we're going to walk you through that, what that looks like. First, the timeless truth is as you read a passage, let's say you're reading through Jonah 2. What is the one truth that you find that jumps off the page to you that you realize was true then and it's true now? Then meaning at the time that it was written. You know, in, in the book of Jonah, when Jonah wrote that in, you know, whatever that was, B.C. And then true today in, in the day that you're in. So what was true then and true now? And you're just going to write that out. No more than three sentences, probably usually a sentence or two about what is this truth that I'm discovering in the scripture. And then from there, you're going to write out the truth verse. So what was the verse or the two verses that made that truth jump off the page to you. And so if it was verse six or seven, whatever the case may be, you will then write that in your journal. You'll write out the truth verse verbatim from the word of God. And then from the truth verse, you're wanting to have a gospel moment. So as you've read through this passage and you've encountered this truth, this timeless truth that was true then and true now, and you see that, that truth found in this verse, how are you falling short of what that truth is? What is a way that you're not able to be enough? That's the first part of the gospel moment, how you don't measure up. But the second part of the gospel moment is how Jesus is the only solution to your problem. He's the only solution to your sin problem. The way that you don't measure up, Jesus measures up for you. And so that's the gospel moment, and you write that out. And then from there, when we encounter the gospel, which we need to every day, that causes us to need to repent in a way that we fall short in our sin and believe that Jesus is enough for us. The easiest way to think about that repent moment is what is the Holy Spirit, based on just encountering the gospel, saying to me? Like, what is he saying I need to start, stop, or believe? That's what's happening when you have that repent moment. So you're gonna write down, what do I need? What is the Holy Spirit telling me I need to do? I need to stop, I need to start, stop, or believe. And then the believe moment is what am I going to do about what the Holy Spirit has just said to me? So repent is what is the Holy Spirit saying to me and believe is what am I gonna do about it? They're actually putting that into action. I'm not just going to ask for forgiveness and say I need to start, stop, or do, or believe something but I'm actually going to walk that out. And so you write that in your journal in the believe moment. And then the last portion is prayer, where you get to respond to the truth promise that you have in the truth verse. If it's a truth, you need to receive it with thanksgiving. If it's a command, you respond to it in faith. And then you have the opportunity to actually pray that God would begin to draw three people to faith. And so just as an example for you, I'm gonna walk you through my journal from October 15th, 2020 in the year of our Lord through Jonah chapter 2. So here's my truth verse from that chapter. It says, the Lord uses all things for the good of those who love him. He can use difficult circumstances to remind us of who he is. So as I read through Jonah 2, that was the truth that jumped out to me. And it's interesting that that truth is actually something from uh, another truth from another part of scripture, but that's how God works. In these, in these unbelievable, like all scriptures God breathed and all points back to who he is. So that was my time of truth. truth. The truth verse that I found that is in verse six. It says, yet you brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you. So I just wrote that out verbatim. Then my gospel moment from that was, I tend to let my circumstances rule me. But the gospel reminds me of who the Lord is and that Jesus uses all circumstances for my salvation to make me more like him. That is how I fall short 
I tend to let my circumstances rule me and be ruled by my feelings and my circumstances. But how Jesus is enough for me, the gospel reminds me of who the Lord is and that Jesus uses all circumstances for my salvation to make me look more like him. So from that, now I need to repent. My repent moment was I need to stop complaining about difficult circumstances, knowing God will use them to draw me into closer relationships, uh, into a closer relationship uh, with me to him. And in my believe moment, what I'm going to do about it is I will praise when faced with difficult circumstances. That's actually something that I have my wife keep me accountable to. That's actually something I make myself accountable to guys in my life that I don't want to be a complainer. I want to be someone who's a praiser in the middle of things that are difficult. And then my prayer, thank you, Jesus, for using every difficult circumstance for my good and for drawing me closer to you. I ask in Jesus name that you would draw Lexi to faith in you, Darren and Nathan in Jesus name. Amen. So that is the gospel arrow in an unbelievable way for you to be continued to have your mind renewed by the promises of God and responding to the gospel every day. Because if you're anything like me, and I think that you are, you need to be changed. And that isn't a one-time change that is an every day being conformed to the image of Jesus by encountering the gospel and responding through repentance and believing in it. You guys are awesome. I love you. Peace on ya.